Hello all. This week we're continuing with pen and watercolour and this time I'm going to paint a window. Um, we have painted windows before but they are a favourite along with doors um, and of course each one is different to the next and so this week I'm including the use of salt for the stippled wall and some wax for the shutters and creating some shadows. This is the window that I'm going to, to do. Um, and I think I won't make it quite so perfect looking. Um, when using my pen, I'll try to make it a little bit more characterful and interesting. Um, these are the colors that I'm going to use and I'm actually for the shutters using a Prussian blue Which is a color I don't use very often But it is a very very bright blue and a nice blue and of course will look nice against um, The little orange flowers that we see on here and in fact this brickwork I think I'm going to paint brick colored because otherwise there's quite a lot of white and I, I want the white wall to show up so I'm going to change things a little bit and that's something that you can bear in mind always to, you know, put yourself into your pictures and, and don't be afraid to, to change things, leave things out, put things in, um, create different colours. Um, I've got three pens out and I'm going to see how it goes. I'm going to use um, a wider pen this time, which in fact is a five. So you'll see what I'm doing re reasonably well. This is a three, slightly thinner. And maybe for the flowers, I'll go for a really thin one. Oh, it's either very thin or running out. I'm not quite sure which. I think I've got another five here somewhere. Um, so maybe I'll get that out instead. Yeah, I think it is quite, uh, quite thin. Um, so those are the colours and as I've said before several times, try not to um, draw the whole thing with a pencil first and then draw over the top with your pen. There's little point in, in drawing it twice. I'm sure you're all good enough, good enough at drawing to, to be able to go straight in with the pen. But what I have done, and I don't know if you can see it, I've just given myself a little guide with the pencil with part of the main structure of the window so that that gives me a start. And, you know, feel free to put the basic structure in with your pencil, but don't get carried away and, and put all the other stuff in. Um, use your pen because otherwise it's going to get very stiff. And in fact, I'm rolling my blue tack over that so that I can only just see my drawing and then I'll go in with a pen and I haven't used a ruler right so I'm going to use the five I think put my glasses on and start with my and I'm going to make wiggly lines I'm going to create interest with my pen and not put a hard, solid, straight line around everything, which really, really doesn't look good. So I'm keeping my pen down and I'm not putting a solid line around. I'm getting a little bit scribbly and wiggly with it, which is going to look way more interesting than if I were to draw a straight, solid line. And it's difficult to remember to do this, so you'll have to, to concentrate all the time. Um, right, so I know there's brickwork going on above this little area here. I'm changing the window slightly because it's got lots and lots of aspects to it before we actually get to the window, but I've simplified it. Always feel free to simplify a subject, which is going to be a good idea with the line and wash anyway. 
So I guess I'll probably have to do part of it and then stop and then paint over the top afterwards. But that is so much nicer to look at, more interesting, has much more character than if I were to just give it a solid ed edged line. And holding the pen in the way that I show here is actually going to help to make it more wobbly and looser. I'm not going right to the bottom of the door at the moment because I want to try to be careful to um, draw everything that's in front first. And actually at about here, it's got some ironwork. So that's got to be obviously in front of the, the rest of the window. So keep your eye on that sort of thing and always paint what's going on in front first. So this has got to be fairly solid looking, but nevertheless, I'm still wobbling about a bit. And then basically where the center is. But first of all, we've got a little basket of flowers here. So I'm going to pop those in. So rather than to go to my thinner pen, I've actually just, I'm touching more lightly with the pen and holding it on, the, on its edge a little bit more so that I'm getting lighter marks. And then some flowers. Nothing too perfect, nothing too precise. I'm being sketchy with everything. And of course you can always go back again with your pen afterwards. So now what have I got? Um, a swirl. So I can darken that and I won't have too much painting to go over the top of it then, which would be quite difficult. So use that pen to your advantage. Right, this has got to look similar, but I'm not going to worry too much if it isn't. We are in Greece and nothing's very perfect looking over there. Okay, it's not too bad. Um, so there are the flowers. Now I can carry on down with the, with the window, which shows up behind the ironwork. time remember to hold the pen loosely you can when you're concentrating really tighten up so you have to watch that now the windows are not quite closed a little bit of jar one is not quite the same as the other side, which is good because we 
we're not trying for that to be symmetrical. And there's a lot of glass in there, which is quite different to some of the other windows. They haven't got little panes in them, um, like some of the other windows that we've painted before. So, trying to be a bit quicker now. Maybe it'll be two videos again, we'll have to see. But for those people who are not coming to Corfu, you'll um, have plenty to keep you occupied. If these end up a little bit longer than normal. Right, so there's my window. And I'm actually going to just indicate with just the side of my pen some shadow and shine on the glass. Not a lot, but enough just to show through the paint. It'll give me less work to do when I get the paints going. Right, now, this has got to sit on the windowsill, and it actually is protruding over the edge a little bit here. Right, good. So now for the shutters. I think I'll go over this side first. This is the most difficult side for me to, to draw. And so there's a hinge thing. And another one here. But we don't have to be perfect and precise. It's better not to be. And these are quite old wood. They don't look nearly as new looking as the wood around the window but I've actually made it all look quite old hopefully. Right so it's a narrow window so we have to watch that we don't make the shutters too wide because otherwise it would upset some people when they look at it because they could see straight away perhaps that the shutters wouldn't fit the window when they're closed. Now the supporting slats across each one has to go in first because the other slats are behind. So all the time think about the way it's going to work logically. And then we have another one coming down here. And then one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Here we go. But it doesn't matter if they're not all the same width. Better probably if not. So again, leaving little work for the pen. This is what line and wash is about, really. So try to remember that, and you don't want to be colouring in like a colouring book and in a hard, overworked way. So this needs to be fairly level with that, this side, as I'm looking straight at my window. Okay. 
This one is a little bit more open than the other one. So again, a good thing, getting away from monotony. So one, two, three, four. And to be honest, you could actually paint half the window or let half of it fade away. There are all sorts of options with something like this. So first of all, these need to go in again. And that <laughs> is looking level, but really I would have thought that it ought to have a bit of a slope as the top is. So maybe that wasn't put on in a level way. This one at the bottom, possibly more so. It's beneath the eye line, so it's still going to go up a little bit. This is now um, sort of level with the eye line here, so it's looking straighter. So think about perspective as much as you can in things like this, in structure. just got a little bit more drawing to do at the bottom here with some bricks and things but I'm going to stop otherwise this is all going to take too long I'll stop and come back okay so I've <clears throat> drawn in the brickwork over the top which is all a bit fancy um, and as I said I'm going to color it brick shade because I thought it would look lovely against the blue and bring out the orange of the, the flowers as well um, so and I've also put a light wash of the um, Prussian blue on the doors because I want to now pop some candle wax on the top and that needs to be dry before we pop that down because I want some of the light color to actually show through when I pop the, the depth of color on the top. I want some nice, really nice bright shadows. Nice bright colours on this, on these shutters here. Now is there anywhere else that I need to pop some candle wax? No, I don't think so. You could mask the flowers off, but I don't think so necessarily because they're going to be um, quite bright anyway. And so if they were white, I probably would mask them off, but I think we'll be okay. So I've got a flat brush out and I've got my dagger brush out, which is going to be quite useful for some areas. And I've also got a round brush out. I'll start at the top and work down, um, popping in the brickwork which I'm going to use alizarin crimson and burnt sienna. But I don't want to make it too bright. So I'm putting a little bit of raw sienna in there to yellow it down a bit and quite a bit of water. Now we don't have to paint each brick individually as we did earlier in the month. We can actually just wash over the top. So this is completely different to the way we have been working. And I'm not worrying about going over the edges of my work or in fact, leaving lovely light paper showing through. This is just a wash, which is completely different to the way we have been painting, but a nice, nice change because we can just relax and be a little bit more painterly with it all. But what I will do is get a smaller brush out 
can drop a little bit of water on the top to create some texture nevertheless and popping a little bit of maybe something like some ultramarine blue onto some of those bricks just to bring in another color and some texture and when that's dry I can go between and put the depth of color in so this is supposed to be quite quick and easy and simple to do. Not laboring over it, coloring in every single detail that you see. So thinking about what you're doing all the time Drop in a little of that ultramarine again. It's actually bringing in a very nice colour. It's a great technique for making little cards for people as well because it's just something that you can do quite quickly and freely, capturing nice little things that you probably would take ages over if you weren't using this method. So don't forget about your flat brushes when you're painting structure because it really is um, is a good brush for this sort of thing. I'll pop some shadows between those bricks when it's all a bit drier. But what I can do, I think, is actually just put a bit of depth underneath here now. There's quite a lot of shadow under there and I'm going to put a bigger shadow under there to ground my picture in a little while. These hinges could be popped in now. They're just little metal hinges. Okay. So now perhaps I can work on the shutters a bit more. Let's see how well the wax has worked. Although I've put wax on there, I'm still going to leave other little patches of light as well, I think. And maybe the struts could be slightly lighter in colour to show them up and create a bit more interest. And I've put some marks, wood-like marks, knots and crevices in the wood with my pen. Okay, that could even have another layer um, a bit later when it's dry, but while I'm at it I'm going to use a little bit of indigo or something like that just underneath these little struts to make them stand out a bit more. Soften the edge. Oh, it's not a bad shutter. I'll go back and pop a little bit more on the struts in a minute. Let's have a go this side. So 
So this Prussian blue is a very bright blue. A little bit different to the Windsor, which is also quite a bright blue, but this is brighter still. I think I'll probably manage to get this done without having to go to two videos this time. May take a little bit longer though than the usual half an hour. Right, I can see depth down this side, so just running it down, putting the brush on its edge. It's darker here. Right. So a little bit more on the struts, but I'm keeping them slightly lighter. So just a little bit more water. Not being particular or too fussy with it. Just washing these colours on. Which was a little bit different to painting the sunflower last week where we had to be a little bit more precise for the petal shapes. Um, right, so the brickwork... plastered under here but I'm going to put brick work here adding a bit more of that shadow color because I think the shadows mostly are this side this side Can't see the top of the bricks on the top of the window there. Right. So there's just a creamy colour of some plaster work going on here. So I'll just pop some raw sienna down which is all going to be complementary to the colours I'm using. Very, very light. And then I'm going to leave the window light. That will need some shadow in a minute. So let's pop this depth in that we need here. And this has got to be quite dark because we're looking inside the house. But I can't see anything except depth. But dropping a little bit of water on there will just drop a little bit of water and that will make it nice and um, natural looking. So it isn't flat. And then we've got some depth coming down here. Oh my goodness, what amazing. Stopped it. I mustn't forget my iron work. So then the depth of colour is between the window here as well. I'll 
finish off the bottom in a minute. Right. Very fine line of depth here. But not quite so dark. Right. Now, not much going on in the window pane. So, just a little bit of neutral tint, I think, here and there. Just to show there's something going on in that window. It's got some glass in it. And a lot of the work was done with the pen anyway. Good. Right. Now I've got to put some depth between these bricks, but that's all going to take quite a long time. So I'll just do a little bit, I think, just to show you, and then I'll do the rest afterwards. And I'm sure you notice that sometimes I just change things a little bit after I've finished um, a demo. Sometimes you just, at the very end, when it's dry completely, need to just touch things up or change things a little bit. So that's all I'm doing there, just putting some shadow between the crevices of the of the little bricks so i'll do some more of that it's really bringing the bricks out so it, it needs to be done and actually is an improvement okay so i can continue to do that i could even bring some down between the slats in the door although it's partly done already. And make sure you don't do it everywhere, just don't get monotonous. Um, it's partly done with a pen anyway. Or you could go in with a wider pen and just bring that up. But it actually makes a difference, just doing putting a few of those shadows in like that. Okay, so now there are some shadows underneath. What did I use? Nice purpley colour. I put some cobalt, um, cobalt violet in with a neutral tint to create some shadows under here. And under here. Just washing it in lightly, just one stroke so that it doesn't get too heavy looking. And some shadow around this little pot of flowers as well. Okay, so now I'll do something with that ironwork and I think I'm going to use some um, neutral tint and some indigo it's quite no I know what I'm going to do I'm using indigo I should ignore that I'm using indigo with some of the Windsor the Prussian blue that I've been using okay there we are so that's the bar that goes across now I think I'll need a smaller brush just to, I think they've tried to make it the same blue um, and maybe they even have but I'm not, I'm making it slightly deeper. Okay. 
So you can go back and put shadow in where you think you might need a little bit more, maybe in that corner. And I guess there ought to be a little bit of shadow going on on the white paint around. So if that's slightly different colour to the window, because it's got the purple in it, that's going to look better. Just a little bit of shadow on that thing there. And I think more shadow under here. So let's be, be brave. Yeah, I think that looks better. There are actually curtains at these windows, but I'm not going to put curtains there. That all gets a little bit too fussy. So here's the basket. And that's just raw sienna. Drop a little bit of water on it. And now I can have some nice orange flowers. In fact, I think they're plastic, but there we are. These are not. And that's going to look lovely against the blue, you see. So when painting little pots and baskets of flowers, be careful not to make a space between every flower. There's a little cluster at the side and it looks much more natural. So you could actually just wait for that to dry before putting some green in there. But I'll have a go at doing it now. Take your time. Don't be fussy, but take your time and create a nice picture. Yeah, I think I have to leave that greenery because it's actually turning brown. I'll put that in later. Okay. So, all there is now to do, nice round brush and pop some more shadow in. So I've got the neutral tint, just a little, keeping it quite light with water and popping the cobalt violet in with it. So I'm getting a lovely purpley shadow on the wall. But actually I was going to be brave and just pop quite a lot of colour on this wall first because I want to put salt on there. So I'm going to stop while I just do this because it's going to take a while. Okay, so I've created a little bit of texture in the wall by just painting some neutral tint, very watery, around the window and popping some salt on. While I was waiting for the salt to um, dry, I just popped some depth between the, the brickwork. Okay, so now all I'm left to do is the shadows. <clears throat> so very watery mix of the neutral tint again with some of the cobalt violet and that I, I can vary maybe drop a little bit of that blue coming in as well and let that happen just to see whether it keeps it all nicely together now there's quite a deep shadow underneath this brickwork here because this top archway is protruding so it's casting shadow underneath onto the bricks so just one stroke there should be enough um, where else have we got some shadow there's a little bit of shadow from the side here creating a little shape down there. This is when photographs are actually, I'm not a great lover of working from photographs, but right now we do need to because we can't be outside all the time. <coughs> oh dear. <laughs> Busy day. Um, so photographs at the moment are really very useful and certainly they're lovely for showing up the shadows for us. So purpley shadow over the, the yellow looks really nice. A bit more in here. Shadows seem to be a little bit more this side than the other side. 
So, little shadow coming down there. And it makes such a difference. It gives character and shape and interest to pop these shadows in. So be careful and make sure you see them well and just paint them in loosely. All the way down here is shadow. Right, and then a nice purpley shadow under here. In fact, it goes all the way over that brickwork from the from the um, shutter. It's making a shape underneath here. Like that. And then um, all the way underneath here, because that's protruding as well. And then there's shadow coming from the pot of flowers, making nice shapes. Really low down. Shadows create some amazing shapes. I don't know why, but that's got a bit coming down, but I don't actually think that's going to look right, so I don't know where that would be coming from, so I'm not putting it in. But that's created some very pretty shapes on this light wall here from Little Pot of Flowers. And then we have, make sure you keep it watery. And then we've got another shadow coming from the shutter here. So the salting should show up beneath my, to create some texture there. It should show beneath the shadows. And that comes right over here, underneath. I think there's a handle or something on the other side of the shutter because again it's got a, a sort of stick like shape. Make sure you stay behind the shutter. It's got a stick like shape appearing but I'm not putting it in because I don't think it would look right in my picture. Okay, so that's the sort of shadow it's creating there. I'll just soften the edge a bit. That's going to look a little bit better if I do that, I think. Okay, so that's it for shadows. Might be a little bit here, but I don't know if it's curtaining. It might be just curtains. But why not? It looks nice like that. And it's showing the glass up a little bit more. And I think that's all I need to do. So <clears throat> I'll attach this picture so that if you don't have anything, if you don't find anything that you particularly want to paint and you want to have a go at following what I've just done here, you can then use this. Okay, so that's, that's my window with shadows with salt, with wax, and with the pen. Um, but if you don't want to do that, and you want to choose another subject, some other ideas of things that I've done, um, that was a, a, a just a very quick drawing. I've got these in the garden at the moment, so that, that was a nice thing to do, and they're lovely and bright. Um, Chinese mountains. Uh, another little window here. This I took a photograph in, in locally at Southwold um, and it had the little cycle outside. So if you've got a cycle and you want something a little bit more complicated, stand it up against the wall and, you know, trim it up a bit with some flowers and a something, a basket or whatever, um, and make a window that way. But as again, you can see, I've, I've put the shadows going all the way across the picture. So don't forget the shadows. Lots of shadow on this one, on the door. 
um, because it's recessed and showing a lot of shadow. Lots of work into the wall there. Um, and a crack in the wall, which I have actually drawn with the pen. I sometimes don't do that, but it seemed to work this time. Um, and little bits of foliage and rock and, and very scribbly. So don't forget that. It's important not to put a hard line around everything. Okay, so um, that's that for this week. Um, and so next week, um, I'm going to, you will receive two videos because I'm away on the 27th. I'll, I'll put two videos on which will cover the two weeks for you so that um, you've got something to do while, while I'm away. Okay, and so then I'll be back in October. Um, that's ridiculous, but time's going. So have a good week, everyone, and I look forward to seeing what you do. Bye-bye. <laughs>